Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tammy Manis are here with me. Uh, we're delighted that you could join us on the programme. Don't forget, if you get a chance, hit the subscribe button and become part of the football family. It is absolutely free to watch our programme and the good news for everybody out there, it's uh, uncensored, unbiased and unashamedly entertaining, Ruffy. Yeah, it certainly is, particularly when Tam comes in on a Monday and a Wednesday and a Friday. Yeah. You know, it just makes it a wee bit different. Absolutely, and uh, it's always good uh, that you can stay in touch with us as well. Some people have been staying in touch even when we leave the studio, Tam. It's really yeah, good I've fun. got some lovely messages on Monday after the show, <laughs> uh, congratulating on some of the points we were making. Yeah, um, So it was great to reply to them. Yeah. Uh, this morning yeah good stuff <laughs> I'm glad you replied to them I just blanked them um, uh, some of the uh, as we always mentioned you know we, we absolutely welcome a lot of people decent people who support their club and enjoy football and realise it's only a game uh, and it's all about opinions some you like some you don't but at least you'll get it on this channel seven days a week and you'll get breaking football news as well as unique video content we try uh, and bring you the best of Scottish football our thoughts on Champions League football and and all the other European matches as well. So if you love football, then why not hit the subscribe button and join us? If indeed you want uh, unbelievably patriotic, biased propaganda, we always say uh, go to your football club channel. That's always a good place to enjoy um, just a one-dimensional view on the game. We'll try and offer you a balanced view here. Player of the Year nominees have been revealed, Ruffy. Men, women, young men, young women as well. It's... Uh, it's a good uh, category of them and before we even get to the nominees I'm going to ask you a quiz question which is who is the first non-Scottish player to win Young Player of the Year? That's a belter of a question isn't it? The first non-Scottish player to win Young Player of the Year. Have a think, we'll give you the answer at uh, around about the end of the show, okay? Uh, first non-Scottish player to win Young Player of the Year. So, uh, well, what was happening at the uh, Young Player uh, of the Year? Women, men, and of course the main award uh, of men and women player of the year. Well, they were all out there uh, today at uh, Arnold Clark and our man Adam Binney was there. I'm at the Arnold Clark Innovation Centre this afternoon as the nominees for Player of the Year in both the men's and women's game have been revealed. Last week, League 1, League 2 and the Championship have been taken care of, so all eyes today are on the Scottish Premiership, the Scottish Women's Player of the Year, as well as Young Player of the Year in both the men's and women's games. In the men's game, we had a trio of Celtic players up today. Kyogo Furuhashi, Rio Hitate and Callum McGregor are joined by Motherwell striker Kevin Van Veen. He's managed 25 goals this season. Safe to say the Motherwell man is in fine company. Of course, very happy. I think if you see the other three nominations, that shows how quality they are, how sens sensational they are and how good players they are. So to be right in the mix of that with the nomination is it's quite uh, impressive and very happy to be here and uh, be nominated. Yeah, it's always nice to, to be in the conversation when you know these individual awards are, are getting handed out. It shows that you know, you're doing something right and, and obviously the PFA one is, is the players' union so you know voted for by the players is, is always a nice one because I think sometimes they understand how difficult the game can be sometimes and, and the consistency of you know what you're doing um, week in, week out. So you know, overall, um, pleased to be nominated. The Women's Player of the Year award was brought into the fold for the first time last season with a few familiar faces yet again this year. Caitlin Hayes, Amy Gallagher and Jacinta Galabadarachi are joined by Rangers forward Brogan Hay. Um, yeah, it's a, a proud moment for myself, um, especially in a season where I think the, the league is really driven on and the competitiveness has went up and you can see the, with the league table that um, results-wise it's getting tight. So yeah, I'm, I'm really proud to be nominated. Yeah, like us, it's amazing. I mean, I didn't expect it this season, uh, same as last season. But yeah, it's an honour to be nominated for not one but two awards. Jacinta is also nominated for the Young Women's Player of the Year award alongside Celtic teammate Shen Menglu and up against Rangers duo Kirsty McLean and Emma Watson. Celtic have a whopping nine nominee representatives as Leila Bada and Matt O'Reilly are up for Young Male Player of the Year alongside Rangers midfielder Malik Tillman and Albion Rover starlet Charlie Riley. 
The players will find out who has won these four illustrious awards at the Glasgow Hilton Hotel on Sunday night at the annual PFA Scotland Player of the Year awards ceremony. The players have had their say, they have voted, but who do you think deserves Scotland's top prizes? <coughs> Yeah, it's a big call and uh, I think a lot of people sometimes lose track of the fact that it is not just members of the PFA union who vote for player, young player and obviously the manager. Everybody gets a vote. So all the managers vote <coughs> for who they think manager of the year is. All the players in every division, regardless of whether they're in the union or not, vote for who they think player of the year is. Yeah, but I think that's, as uh, Callum was saying there, that's a good thing about it. You know, if you win it, you know, it's the players that you played against all year. You know, respect the, what you've done, whether you've done particularly well against them or not. Uh, and I think they've got it right. You know, I think the three Celtic players plus Van Bean, I, I would have said maybe Duke might have challenged him a wee bit, but I think the amount of goals that Van Veen scored has just taken them in there. I don't know if it'd be good enough to get them to win the... Trophy. Well, Niall says if Van Veen gets 30 goals, he'll win it easily. Um, I don't think he's going to get 30 goals before Sunday, Niall, <laughs> um, because quite simply, that's always the argument for a lot of people. The week after is the football writers. Um, they nominate their player of the year and decide who it is. But the players have to vote a little bit earlier. And if you make a late run, sometimes it's just not good enough. Yeah, he, he might be in the mix for the sports writers as well. Obviously, it's a little bit later on, and maybe there'll be some later votes. But you know, this is as you said, it's it's announced on Sunday. But you know, I, I think the four are, are probably the right four. I think that Kevin Van Veen definitely deserves to be in the four. I think for him to score twenty five goals for a team that struggled for the majority of the season uh, is a fantastic achievement. It's not just his goals; it's the quality of his goals. You know, seeing the goal at the weekend, you know, against Kilmarnock, fantastic goal. You know, but he scored goals like that all season. He's led the line for for Motherwell over the last couple of seasons. Terrific player, and he deserves to to be in the mix. Uh, that the, the interesting one for me is a young player here. Um, you know, O'Reilly, Abada. You know, guys like that. I don't think they've been particularly consistent this season. So I think the yeah, I think the young lad Charlie O'Reilly, Albion Overs, has got a real chance of, of winning that one. Mm. Ruffy, any there that caught your eye that you think? For me, I mean, I've been. Going on about Hatati most of the season, Kyogo's been banging it in as well. I think the injury Hatati had has been out of the limelight for a wee while. That can affect it a wee bit. No, I'm I'm definitely going. We don't get many doubles, but I'm going to go for Callum McGregor to win both the awards. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll tell you one thing that was really good today, and I, I nipped out there to the Innovation Centre at Arnold Clark to see. Uh, all the players, there was a, huge, a strong contingent of Rangers girls there and Celtic as well. It was good to see uh, the nominees come in there under the umbrella last season and I think the more people see them winning awards, I think the more the more girls will want to play the game. I think it's a great influence now and it's getting stronger and stronger. Uh, you know, what is it going to take? Maybe 10 years till we get to that point where a lot of them are absolutely, you know, I'm not saying they're not top athletes now, but I think for us to get a greater amount of quality in the game, we need more and more people playing it. Yeah, we do, and I, th I think obviously some of the teams are full-time now, and I think that's a massive difference, you know, from maybe a Glasgow City, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, they've kind of dominated it, but they've always been part-time as well, and they're, they're in there competing with some of the biggest clubs in Europe, but, you know, Celtic Rangers, massive investment in both, both the women's teams. Um, and Glasgow City have obviously invested in it as well so I think the Women's League is as strong as it's ever been in Scottish football this season it's shown by the top three in the table they're all neck and neck you know it's a very exciting end to the season and you know I think there was a young girl Emma Watson who came on and scored for Scotland I think she's only 17 or 18 yeah. so you know it just shows you that they're starting to produce young players as well and she's a very very talented player as well so been interesting to see who wins that I, I, I'm not up to date on, on women's football uh, Jacinta won it, won it last year She'll probably be one of the favourites to win it again, but it's, it's a nice mix of, of Celtic Rangers players in there as well at the minute. Yeah. There's nobody for Glasgow City? No. No. That's a surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they've been the front runners most of the year, you know. Well, try not to blame Tam and I for, no, for that. I mean, it's no, actually just, the players just, who vote. Yeah, I know that. Because we're getting the blame for everything else, Tam, yeah, aren't we? It's your fault. Yeah. Well, I'm just a bit surprised. <laughs>
I love there's a line here there's, uh, there's a good line in here from someone who's just sent us a message uh, saying is Peter starting an argument in an empty room again yes. well done Les um, we always like to offer you an opinion I mean it's you can either take it or leave it it's always uh, gets you going um, everybody loves a good pub argument and of course uh, there's nothing better than hearing somebody say I hate him and they don't even know you Ruffy isn't that good <laughs> yeah and we've had a right good few of them coming through Tam haven't we some of the messages to Wars has been absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Brilliant. You're great. I got sent a picture last night. Somebody had superimposed their <laughs> two faces on the Batman and Robin. <laughs> the Batman and Throbbing. <laughs> oh, you, you can take from that what you, what you, what yeah. you think. But uh, aye, that was, some of them were quite funny, but there was a fair degree of abuse. But I think we can all handle it. Yeah, absolutely. We're big enough and man enough to handle it. Also, dare I say it, Ruffy, sometimes when you get, and I'll never forget the big guy, Alan, was it Alan Russell? Uh, oh, Shyness. Yeah, big shyness. I can always tell when somebody comes on to the, the stage who's won the award whether they think it's really down to them or it's, you know, they've been helped by their teammates. Well, <laughs> it's 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 got a battle oh, it scored an absolute battle. Listen, he ended up going on as the striking coach for England. That's right. Um, but he was, a, he was a funny big lad, but he, he, he was like, do you know what he reminded me of? He reminded me of one of the guys who was in the Wham Club Tropicana video. I played him at Hibs. You know? I played him coming through. He's a uh, handsome man. Yes, and when I said, to him, you know, you've scored a battle of goals, Ruffy. You must, you know, must be delighted at the service and everything that your teammates contributed to you winning it. And he just looked at me <laughs> and he paused. And it was just that pause as if to say, okay, so nothing really about your mates is all down to you then, you know. And and players sometimes when they win this award, mm. it gets them a move. Yeah, it certainly does. So there's been a right few, but I was going to say to you what when you when the Player is announced as the winner. What's your worst nightmare when they come up with the food to drink? The, Too it, much to drink. No, before they get up. The worst nightmare is <laughs> the worst nightmare is the Oscars. <laughs> the worst the eight nightmares the Oscars. I've got a story about that, by the way. But the worst nightmare is the Oscars when somebody reads out the wrong name. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, Please, God, don't make that happen, or we'll all get pelters. What happens if one of the Japanese boys won it? Have you tuned up in that? I am. There's I am now at this point looking and saying to myself, Do I need to go and learn Japanese? Do I need to learn a little bit of um, Dutch? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course uh, there are um, there's a Chinese uh, girl who's in the running as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I just have an absolute nightmare. I just hope there's a translator. Google translate on his phone. Absolutely. But listen, you've got to be prepared for everything. My favourite story on that, I have to tell, tell you, and I didn't want it to get out at the time, was when uh, Alfredo won goal of the season and I had learned a little bit of Spanish and I said to him congratulations you've won player of the year and I said it to him in as, as fluent a Spanish as I could possibly do and uh, he looked at me and he just smiled and he f answered me back in uh, you know, in Spanish, and uh, I translated to the audience what I thought he said anyway, yeah. and it was absolutely, the whole place was in stitches, but the good thing is, Alfredo understood English and he knew exactly what I was doing. Um, but listen, uh, sometimes you get a big move, mm -hmm. sometimes if you win manager of the season in the championship, you get sacked. Yeah, amazing. Gary Boyer amazing, sacked. Amazing. Yeah, there's obviously things going on, I don't know if... Uh, do you want me to tell you? I don't know if our wee pals had anything to do with that. Yeah, well, um, no, I think John Nelms has really been at the forefront of making that call um, because, quite simply, the two of them haven't been getting on, I'm led to believe. There's a bit of friction there, Tam. I don't think uh, Gary Boyer was happy with the training facilities. He mentioned it uh, over and yeah, above they're that. Not, they're not great. Uh, I don't think Gary Boyer was uh, too happy with the way things were going uh, as far as, you know, discussions on him being allowed to just run the playing side of things and I think it all came to a head had he lost it I think it would have been an easier sacking for John Nelms but I'm told this morning he just walked in handed him the envelope and said wasn't goodbye a, wasn't a fax no <coughs> no wasn't a, wasn't a whatsapp <coughs> you still in that whatsapp no, <coughs> yeah. no, I, no I, th I think that listen I, I don't think he's going to have a great loss I, I, I wow. made a real dog's dinner winning that league Dundee this season I feel they, they should have won that easily I don't think it's been one of the poorest championships that I've seen in a long time. I think that will I think the, the total points to, to, tally of the winners is as low as it's ever been. Um, you know, Queens Park lost. I think they've won one in the last eight, and they still had a chance to win it in the last game of the season. So, I think they, they won it, but 
they just got over the line. They made it hard for themselves, and just out of that, curiosity, that, that, that club needs a it needs a, a big it's still a big won influx. It. They did win it, Peter. I know I'm not taking it away for them. They won the league, great. But I don't think it's that big a it's that big a loss. I think there's managers out there who can come come in who's been linked. Jack Ross has been linked. Callum Davidson's been linked, and I think they're they're I think they're a better caliber of manager. You really, you really threw it out there. He wasn't happy with the way the finances were. You know, because as soon as they won the league, he said, "You better yeah. get your act together because this team." Aren't they going to survive unless you start? Oh, they, they, some need, they need serious money invested in that. That squad becomes right back down. Yeah, here's a statement from uh, Dundee regarding Gary Boyer. You can make of it what you will. Dundee Football Club can confirm the departure of manager Gary Boyer and assistant Billy Barr. Uh, Gary helped the club achieve its objective an immediate return to the Cinch Premiership. And we're grateful to him for leading us to the title and automatic promotion. Now is the time for certainty as we enter a critical summer of work in the transfer market and on the training ground. To to ensure the first team squad is ready to compete in the Premiership and remain in the top division. Well, you've mentioned a few players. Um, another little story coming out. Uh, Neil Lennon's representatives are due for talks with Greek side Olympiakos um, over the next two or three days. Of course, you know, is Dundee a, a club that could satisfy his ambitions? Have they got enough money to, to let him build a side? You know, Gordon Strachan's there. I'm just throwing these things in. Yeah. No, I don't think there's enough money there for Neil. No. I think I think he enjoyed his uh, foreign experience and enjoyed everything that went with it and getting away out of the environment, you know, having a different lifestyle. Uh, and that's a massive club that he'd be going to in Greece, you know, and, you know, the rewards that come with that, you know. But uh, yeah. I think we'll have to wait and see in that. We've seen these statements they put out. Yeah. It, I mean, why don't, they t why don't they tell the truth, you know, what they're thinking? It's just yeah. that sort of a... It's what a, Dundee a Football Club off. would like to acknowledge that the the uh, the main chairman fell out with the manager. Oh, yeah, no, he yeah, had yeah, a, yeah, a blazing row in mid February. He, and he, <laughs> he's got a heavy link to Blackpool as well. Gary Boy has been yeah. there before. Why did they not just say we're really looking forward to next season and everything that goes with it? We don't we don't trust Gary Boy with the tra transfer, so he's off. Well, that's not the, the case. But can I just say something to you? Hey, they don't tell the truth. Just out of curiosity, calm your jets. You were on the board at Thistle. I didn't see. I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't see any great. Or, I didn't, wait a minute. I didn't see any great. Gary called you. We sacked him. No, Hold no, on. No. Wait till he answers this. I Neither. didn't see many. No, I didn't see many honest statements when we were talking about the voting. You didn't release a statement there to explain to all of us about Dundee voting. And you in you bed, you in bed, you in hearts, you in bed with Dundee and hearts. In the WhatsApp group. Well, we did we get bed. a statement? They weren't in bed with them that much when they had done us in. Yeah. Did so we, we couldn't have been doing that. Well, well why didn't with you Dundee. release? Why didn't you release a statement say Patrick Thistle are really unhappy with Dundee? They've done us in. We did. Mm -hmm. We boycotted. Uh, we boycotted. Gary Caldwell. No, yeah. no, I wasn't there. We sacked him. Big Britso, Jerry Britton. I don't know who was there. Ah, give us the statement. I was there. I'd left it at that time. Oh, that was lucky. Yeah. Right, OK. Um, anyway, it's not necessarily about he wasn't overly happy with the transfer, but there's clearly a breakdown in the relationship between uh, John Nelms and Gary Boyer, and, and these things happen. But the ultimate thing is, when you have a club, a chairman, a chief executive, an owner, they have the right to determine where they want to go with the club. And Gary Boyer, if he's not the man, he's not the man. Barry Robson's the man. Um, he's got manager of the month, second in a row, second month in a row. And I don't think anybody would argue with it. What a job he's done. No, brilliant. 4 out of 4. Um, obviously beat Rangers as well, so I think he deserves it. And listen, they'll be looking forward to next season. They're hot favourites at the minute to finish third and get that money that comes with that. You know, that which, which would be huge for Aberdeen. It would give Barry Robson a real, you know, pot of money to go and strengthen that squad next season. They've got some sellable assets up there. Um, Duke and Majofsky in particular. Guys that can sell for big money. If they get that money on top of that, they could maybe entice them to stay for another season with European football guaranteed. So, you know, as I said a couple of weeks ago, from being in the depths of despair, losing to Darvo and getting hammered with hips and hearts, you know, fast forward maybe two months and you're, you're sitting in a great position at the minute, Aberdeen, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're top of the world up there at the minute, you know, you're, you're sitting in third and you're looking ahead to the future rather than, you know, looking over your shoulder as Aberdeen were under Jim Goodwin at the times. Well, see today, Ruffy, when I was looking at some of the nominees, not necessarily the, the Celtic players, we're looking at the likes of Kevin Van Veen, um, and you're saying to yourself, there are a number of players out there that if Aberdeen... Uh, Mickey De uh, Nicky Devlin, mm -hmm. another one um, from Livingston. There's a number of players out there. If you're looking to become that third force or indeed maybe close the gap on Rangers and Celtic, 
Hearts, Hibs and Aberdeen should be looking at some of the, the players and thinking, can we get them, s snap them up, some of the out of contract ones and say, you know, come here, you're going to play European football. The facilities are good. Hearts, great. Hibs, training facility is second to none. Aberdeen's up there. Um, the Cormac Park, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely young players out there. Uh, that uh, you've got if that's why they've all got a director of football you're, you're looking at him to be scouring the whole country you know for the start of the season to the end of the season and having and, and a piece of paper with young players that they think they can progress because we certainly have had a few you know recently in the last couple of years young ones the Doigs and the Hickeys and all them the Ferguson so they're out there you've just got to pin the right one that suits your club. Yeah, OK. Uh, a number of players have signed uh, deals uh, to stay in Scottish football, which is good. Uh, Ryan Jack has signed a new Rangers deal, but it looks as if Antonio Cholak is on his way. Um, so I think in the next couple of days they should announce Ryan Jack one-year extension that will keep him to 2024. Uh, he's 31 at the moment. What do you make of that? I think it's a decent signing for Rangers. I mean, I think he's he's a guy who's been over the course and distance. You know, he's if he stays away from injury, he's had a few injury problems. If he stays away from injury, then I think he's a very good player. Um, so I, I think that's a solid signing for Rangers. You know, in terms of the squad, they see him playing every week at Rangers. I think if, if Rangers are going to go and challenge Celtic and topple them, I, I don't think so. I think he'd look for better, but he's a handy player to have about the squad. He knows the club and, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously won things at Rangers. So... Cholak's the one for me that's, which is a little bit of a surprise. I think that when he first came in, you know, at the start of the season, he was banging the goals and he's picked up an injury. He's picked up quite a few injuries. He's not been seen over the last couple of months. Um, and maybe Michael Beale's thinking, he's thinking to himself, you know, he's got two years left and maybe get some money for him. You know, I think they paid, what, two million for him. I think if they can get two, that money back, you know, it would give, you know, Michael Beale maybe some money to bring in. I think he's a solid player at, at Premiership level. But again, I think Rangers have got to be looking for better. They've got to be looking for better. Um, and I think there's players out there who Rangers can go and sign who are better than Cholak, but it might be they need to sell him to, to refund you know, a rebuilding job at Rangers. And uh, if Michael Beale's happy to do that, then I don't think a lot of Rangers supporters will be gutted to see him leave, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I think they need a really potent new strike force that can get that 20 25 goals it needs to be as you said Ruffy and Tam says you know non-stop on this show if you are a Rangers or a Celtic striker you've got to be looking to score 25 a season mm -hmm. with the chances you get um you know Cholak I, I think you know when you look at what he's done 17 goals in 38 games um you know, it's almost a goal every two games. At, at times he's looked all right. He had a really good purple patch. But I, I, I think they really need to find a couple and a, and a strike force that can put the fear of God into a few teams. Um, and, I, and the one thing that, that I'm looking at, Ruffy, is there's the finance director, Kenny Bartley, has left the club as well. That's a lot of bodies they're clearing out at that boardroom level. There's got to be something. There's got to be big changes coming that's, yeah. uh, you know, the Rangers fans, I don't know if they're going to be excited or whatever, but there's got to be some announcement coming. Yeah, I was just going to say that there. I think the, the Rangers fans will be sort of, a, not maybe demanding is not the right word, they'll be wanting a statement. They'll be wanting a statement of what's happening behind the scenes in the club, you know, because that is some enormous changes in the club since Douglas Park sort of a step back a wee bit you know all these changes have happened and that would lead you to believe that if you want to be a sceptic you would say there's something happening yeah. there's something happening there whether it's a takeover whether it's you know other in big big investors coming in and they're making shots behind the scenes saying like he needs to go if we're coming in here and we're giving you X amount of millions he needs to go and you need to move him and that's what the Rangers supporters will be saying to themselves because there's nothing went out there. You kind of keep saying, oh, he's left, he's left, Mulholland's left. I mean, that's massive, massive changes behind the scene. Yeah, if anything, with John Bennett being in there, uh, Tam, all it says to me is, is he wants his own men uh, around him as he tries to plot winning the title of Celtic and giving the manager as much money as he possibly can. Plus, of course, he's got to look and make sure um, that the CEO, James Bisgrove, also gets the right men around him to create the, enough money for a team that can hit the ground running for those two qualifiers in the Champions League. Yeah, I think it's like anything. I think when a, when a new manager comes into a club, he wants his own players. You know, when a new, he, he wants his own coaching staff. He brings them with him. 
I don't think it's any different at boardroom level. You know, he's obviously come in, John Bennett, and he's thought to himself, we need a, we need a revamp at this level. You know, we, we need fresh blood, we need fresh ideas, we need fresh money. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll rejig it. They've lost, you know, as I said, another guy left today, the guy Bartley, and they've, you know, five or six people have went out, but they've got to be replaced, you know, by, by four or five at the top level. So, no, I think that they are, they're looking for, for fresh investment and uh, they're clearing the decks to try and do that. Okay, interesting times. Uh, you can give us your thoughts on that as well. Uh, Tam McManus and Alan Ruffer with me, Peter Martin. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. If you hit the bell, you get all the notifications as well. We'd be delighted if you could join the football family. It's absolutely free to watch. And of course, um, lots of big things happening over the next few months on PLZ Soccer. That I think you might enjoy and hopefully you can uh, join us if you like opinion. And of course, if you like the content that we're putting out as well. If you download the app uh, then uh, if you do download the app uh, then you'll get all the breaking football news on there too as well as our unique video content talking off um, news of players staying he's 35 now and Lewis Stevenson has signed a new deal at Hibs are you a happy man? No I am a happy man I think every Hibs supporter will be delighted by that news I think that Lewis is Someone who, my final season at Hibs was I think 2005, I think that was his first season, I think he was on the ground staff. So for him, still to be there, what, 18 years later, is I think fantastic. And I don't know how many left backs he's seen off, you know, how many left backs have Hibs signed to replace him. How many new managers have, have come in and went, hmm, need a left back. They've signed him and two months later they end up playing Lewis Stevenson. It's, it's, it's uncanny, you know, whether that's, you know, been Alan Stubbs or Pat Fenlon or whoever it is that's come in, Tony Mowbray. You know, he's always been there and uh, I think he's a tremendous player, tremendous professional and I'm so happy that he signed a new deal, deserves it. I think he's, <coughs> he's every time I've seen him this season, he's been one of his best players. He's still fit as, you know, fit as a fiddle up and down the pitch. You know, great professional, great about the dressing room and it's very unusual for, for someone to, you know, stay at a club that long. You know, and uh, I think he's catching up. I think it was Pat Stanton who's, who's a top appearance the record holder. Yeah. I think if, if Lewis plays the next couple of seasons there, he could he could end up becoming that as well. Well, he's close. He's on 572. Pat Stanton has 617. Arthur Duncan is on 626. And Gordon Smith is on 636 in all competitions for Hibs. Gordon Smith, of course, um, the only player, I think, to win three top flight league winning medals with clubs out with the old firm at the time uh, when he was a young player he was uh, uh, he's the one player of the past uh, Ruffy um, there's maybe a few but he's certainly one of them in my top five that I would love to have seen play because people tell me he was a player yeah and seemingly I mean I talked to when I'm through at Hibs I talked to sort of the older people who are from that era you know and he seemingly was a bit of a character as well yeah I think he drove a Porsche of course he was yeah. way above you know, Playboy. Yeah, uh, it's not Gordon Smith, Smith, the Rangers no, player. No, interesting. No, no, this is no, one no, before no. him. He was a Playboy, and seemingly, as as, as Peter said, he had a Porsche and he had all the trilby hats and all that. And after a game, he would think nothing more. I just jumped in an airplane and flying to Cannes and Saint Tropez and all that. And there's things you don't, you wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, you know, but that's what kind of guy he was. He was that. He was so far ahead of his time. It was unreal. Yeah, um, that's great, isn't it? That's a great insight, isn't it? He just got on a plane and flew to San Trope. Ruffy Zero. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> he, was a ball, he was a ball and goalie of his day. He just got on a plane. Time to see the chain to muscle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, brilliant. Well, listen, he was a, a top-drawer player. I'd love to have seen him play. Uh, I wonder if you can come up with uh, some players that you haven't seen that you would... You would really have loved to have seen. Um, is there any player that you would like to have seen, Ruffy? Uh, Bobby Evans. Yeah. I keep hearing a lot about Bobby Evans, obviously. Do you know who I thought I'm you were going to say? Lev Yashin. I thought from a goalkeeping perspective. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. No, the people from the Rangers and Celtic area, e eras that you hear about, you know, I was just at the same time as the George McLean and the Jim Forrest and all them were coming yeah. at the end of the career. But, I mean, all these clubs have all got people from away beyond that, you know, yeah. they've the seen them. But it'd be interesting to see, you know, everybody talks about them, oh, they wouldn't have survived in the modern day, they wouldn't have done this, they wouldn't have done that. And, yeah. You know, give them a modern day football, give them a modern day football park, you know, and then you'll see how good they were. Yeah. Um, 
What are you? What were you, Tom? Probably about Johan Cruyff for me. Yeah, I'd like to see him playing. You obviously, you're older. I mean, you've maybe seen him playing, but I, I'd never seen him playing bar tapes. Never seen him live, but probably him quality. Yeah, absolute top drawer, Ruffy. That's all I'm saying to you. He's uh, one of my top five players oh, of all yeah. time. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have played Ken Douglas on your phone? We're getting that printed. I just can't get it on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it, haven't you? Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Johan Cruyff's a great shout, uh, Tom. It was a good team he had then. Oh, well, the c crowd coming through after him. The Niskins and the Reps and the Van der Kerk. Oh, they were, they were Cruyff. I know, but he was coming at the end then, was he not? Hey, no, he was part of that. Was he? Yeah, Johnny Rep um, in that team, Johan Niskins. They pl both played together at Barcelona as well. Yeah. So played against Johnny Rep in an Scotland under-18 game. Did you? At Ibrox. Wow. Semi-final of the UEFA Cup. Championship. Well, he scored. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you lose? One nil. Did you? Uh, was it your fault? Uh, no, not at all. You know, well. Graham Sinister's fault. He <laughs> <laughs> shot him down. <laughs> we'll pass that on to him. Striker, heart striker. Yeah. Who would? Don't tell me. Don't tell you'll me. You'll get it. You'll get it. I know you'll get it. The heart striker on that Donald Ford. No, young, young player. Young. A young, yeah. a young player. Yeah. Uh, a young player from that t from Hearts. Was it he Donald was the Park? Centre forward. No. No. Are we going? Oh well, wait, that 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 would be nineteen sixty-eight. Oh, 69. sixty-eight. All right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Graham so, Souness was in the midfield. Graham Souness in the midfield. Kenny Watson for Rangers was the centre half. Right. Alistair Robertson for West Brom, I think, was the centre half. And it's a young heart striker. No, heart heart striker. Derek Parlin was one of our strikers. Ah, Derek, great lad, brilliant yeah. lad. Um, Blonde hair. Oh, right, you're going to know him. Don't tell me. Blonde hair played up front for Hearts. Neil Did Berry. I, do, do I, Neil Berry, you're a dumb man. I don't even know why I, I, don't even know why I bothered looking around him, Ruffy. He's blonde hair. Oh, really blonde do, hair. Do I know him? I think you will know him if I, I told you. I know him? I think you, I think you actually. Have we had him on the show? No, no. No? No. no. Still alive? I don't know. Know. Right, okay. God, I'm raging by the way. How do I not know a hearts player from, Somebody from, might tell you. from the blonde blonde hair? Uh, well, I'll tell you right Just now. Team of no hearts. I don't, well, sh shut up. I'll get pelters from them as well. <laughs> by the way, I can see the headline now. <laughs> Rough blamed Rangers legend for goal in the, in the European Championships. <laughs> All right, brilliant. No, you need to tell Thank me. Go. Eric Carruthers. I wouldn't go. Oh, I wouldn't have got that. Eric Carruthers. Yep. Okay. Was he a good player? Great player. He yeah. used to share. It, he used to share a room with Graham Sinnis. <laughs> <laughs> Graham used to have cleaning his boots. Oh, <laughs> Brilliant. Graham said he was a better player than I first thought. Yeah. yeah <laughs> is that the best you've got by <laughs> any any chance you get back to your puns? I right, prefer that by the way. Anyway, Ruffy, what did you make of? Uh, what did you make of last night? 4-3, what Great a, what a Entertainment. game. Entertainment, yeah. that's what I mean. No holes barred, go just going for it. Nobody's sitting in. Uh, some of the goals were very good, some of them were very poor. But uh, obviously at three each, I was a wee bit uh, worried. Uh, but I think given the fact that Brian scored that fourth goal, I think it gives us a wee bit of leeway. And I think the encouragement thing is that they, they're now losing goals. Well, Chris, Chris Dolan's certainly not happy um, at the goals that uh, he conceded, one in particular. I look back at some of the goals we, we lost and you know I think the second one, there's, there's a, a clear foul before before the goal. Uh, I can't believe it wasn't given uh, on Kyle Turner. I just felt it was if the, the referee's five yards away. It's not a difficult one. Um, but if you let these things go in big games like that, you know, look what happens. They, they, they get a goal, they get back in the game, they feel as if um, they're getting the impetus, um, but you know it's goals change games. Um, but luckily we go up the park at the end and you know get a, a goal which we rightly deserved. Mm, again, managers unhappy at a goal that he thought should have been chalked off. He's right. I watched the game and uh, I think it was a, f a foul on the lad Turner at the edge of the box, and it bounced to the Queen's Park player who had a, sh a speculative shot and it hit the somebody head that into for an own goal and that changed the game. You know, three one up, party thistle were cruising, could only see one winner and then. Your boy Dom Thomas cuts in and hits one which a goal they should do better at. You know, and uh, all of a sudden it's three it's shooting over and Thistle, thankfully for them that we it felt the right man at the right time in the last minute. Brian Graham, who wasn't who wasn't too happy at the end of the game with the supply he got all night, I think he only got one chance, he said, and the, the, the wingers need to put more balls in for him. But 
I think Thistle deserved to win the game. I thought they were the better I thought, team throughout. I thought we were quite fortunate in the first half. If VAR had been there, the one with the goalkeeper, the one at the post, yeah. right there, that that would have been worth a look. Yeah, you know, to see where it where it was. I'm curious to see or hear your thoughts, Ruffy, after you hear what Owen Coyle, the Queen's Park manager, had to say. And what I do know from what I've seen tonight is we can win that game on Friday night. What we need to do, and it's very clear, is we need to defend better because if we do, we can score. We we know we can score goals the way we're trying to build this club obviously uh, and this is the, the challenge because obviously we know we're building long term but equally in the short term we have a chance something tangible to uh, to move through to the next round to do that if we defend better and play the way we can in terms of passing and moving the ball then there's no doubts we can win the game on Friday night Well it's going to be an absolute belter on Friday night Alison McConnell is covering it for us um, what do you make of the chances is it, is it a, a case of you feel that Thistle can go there and win that game as well? Well, I think Thistle will be encouraged. That's nine goals of loss in two games. You know, it's not <laughs> a great record. You know, I know that doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but I think it's the old cliche, isn't it? Patrick Thistle get the first goal. I can't see them getting beat. Okay. Pam? Well, Thistle stick on. Yeah? Absolute certainty. Okay. Um, listen, the great thing about these playoffs, and, and I've been speaking to people, obviously, now that the playoffs are here, which is fantastic, you know, you, you, I think they, they, it really works, Tam, doesn't it? It does, and uh, as I say, that was unfortunate. It wasn't about when I was when I was playing, and it gives you something to play for. You know, when I was playing, it was one up, one down. There was no playoffs, and your season could be over in March. You could be <coughs> sitting mid table. You know, couldn't go up, couldn't go down. So I think it's been a great addition. You know, it keeps everyone interested. You know, it's it's great for the pyramid system, and we've seen some some fantastic games last night. That game and, and the game, obviously, we're about to talk about as well with, with Adrian Falkert. You know, two teams going hammer and tongs again, and, and a couple of Falkert fans went the game last night and. They're absolutely devastated. They're, they're going to be in League One for another season, but they said that Airdrie were absolutely fantastic in the first half and blew them away. Well, for nothing off at one point. They were, and they said some of the football Airdrie played was, was fantastic. And that, they've done that all season. I think there's been, I think I read today, there's been 47 goals in the last 10 games in, in Airdrie games. So they're getting value for money if you're a, if you're going to watch Airdrie every week. Um, so I think that ties over. It's done, and uh, it will be either. Or, or, or Hamilton in the in the playoff final. Mm, interesting. Uh, John says I'd like to see two up, two down automatically, and two playoff places. I was listening to an interview with David Martindale, and obviously he's pushing out there for some kind of change. <laughs> I thought his idea was good. I think it was promoting. I think it was four or six from the championship, and then making it two down, uh -huh. and the third bottom playing a playoff. Mm -hmm. That would shake it up. Yeah, that, that would that would make it exciting. I think that I, I'd like to see the change. Uh, I, I have been speaking with a few people at various levels, you know, and saying, look, people want more. Um, people want more um, leeway for managers to play Scottish players. Um, people obviously want less of a feeling of you're kicking off seven or eight games into the season, Tam, and suddenly you're trying to talk about avoiding relegation. Yeah. That can't be right. It, there is a format that could work for 14. There's definitely a format that works also for 16, which would still give everybody their, you know, their four games against the biggies, you know, the big, uh, yep. you know, fan base, uh, you get your two home games. But the problem, you know, is in most of these cases, there's an early split that you have to get to, which means that suddenly that bottom eight or that bottom six are you know, are playing a lot of games where there's nothing other than avoiding relegation. Yeah, but... I, I, I think you I, get to 22 games and then it works as a split. Yeah, I, I think it's, something needs to be done. You're right, I think the, the amount of managers that are losing their jobs at the minute, you know, after going in a bad run and start to sink towards the bottom, you know, the, the league's not big enough. You know, there's no leeway. There's no leeway to go in a bad run. You go in a bad run as a manager in Scotland, you're out, you're out the door. So I think it would give more opportunities for young players to play as well. There'd be less pressure on managers. You know, if you're if you're sitting safe before a five games to go, right, you're going to play some of your younger players. I don't think there's been there's a there's a case at this season because, you know, Bath probably Motherwell, uh, you know, everyone else has been safe. You know, in that bottom six, and then there's all to play from the top six. You know, they're all still in it. So there's been there's been no margin for for managers to go right. 
listen, we can start to blood some of your promising young players. So I think a bigger league would, would definitely let us do that. Mm, John says, relegate all teams who use plastic pitches from the SPFL. I'm with you on that, John. Uh, William Lang says, 16 <coughs> team league. Um, Stuart Derek has a different opinion. He says, uh, David Martindale, jump in your car and drive up to Dundee. Um, it's amazing how he... That could be a job for him, by the way. Could that could be. be a job for David Martindale. It really could, couldn't it? That's the one for me where, where I was thinking about Premier League. Mm. I think if you're looking for somebody like him to keep you in a division, I think David Martindale goes up with a bigger club, bigger budget. I think he's one that, that Dundee maybe look at in terms of somebody in to keep you in the league, because that's what it's all about for Dundee next season, staying in that league. Yeah. Um, we like to try and answer as many of your points as possible. JG says, why are the Scottish media blanking all the departures at Ibrox? Well, I'm not sure they are doing that, because quite simply, we've discussed it here on the programme today, JG, as we do as many topics as we possibly can. Um, <laughs> and Kieran Maguire says, Tam McMahon is always negative about Celtic. <laughs> You can't. You need to stop by. How many? Is there was a negative about Celtic? Can I tell you something? Is there any chance? Is there any chance? You know you're doing something right when everybody hates you. Well, this is a good point, Tom. I was going to say to you. Right. It's absolutely. I don't sit in the fence with you like you. I don't just sit and yeah. Yeah. beat yeah. about the bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sit on. He's got an opinion, so everybody hates me. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Don't get upset about it. By the way, I'm just pointing out. Right, the people. I'm just. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was Kieran. Right. Uh, Alawa Hamilton one nil. Alawa won the game, Ruffy. But I don't know about you, but I think. John Rankin will fancy it well I don't know how the, the game I know how the, the result panned out I don't know how if it was fortunate or they the, the deserved the win but you would like to think if you got the home advantage you're only a goal down you know you should be able to turn that round but I'm sure Allah will have something to say about that I think the great news though is Adam King um, there was quite a delay because obviously he collapsed on the pitch there's mm. always a worry um, he was dazed he went to hospital for checks um, and it looks as if he's he's okay today obviously they're going to monitor him closely Closely, it's the last thing you want to see on a football. Oh, it's a, it must must have been a real scary thing, you know, for for some that collapse like that. And we, we've seen it before in Scottish football. You know, God rest him, Phil O'Donnell done it. You know, and didn't get back up. So f thankfully, he got back up. I think Alison was reporting on it, and she said that there might be some sort of virus that was going through the, the team, and maybe he was just weak or dehydrated, and he's just collapsed. So hopefully, it is just that, and it's not anything serious. No, um, and, and he got up and got on with it. And listen, that's that's a great result for Alloa. You know, to go and take a lead to Hamilton, you know, is, is a good result. Hamilton bang up against it. You know, Hamilton go down. That's a that's a disaster for Hamilton Ackies. And it could be that Brian Rice, their ex manager, who they sacked, you know, could be the one to put the knife in. But that that, that tie is very much still alive, mm. rather than the the next one we're going to talk about. Yeah, William Smith says, Tam, you're a good lad. See, there's some people that like you. Thanks, William. Uh, William is in Colombia. He's in Colombia. Uh, and uh, Bill, I must have a few different names. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> well, your dad's on now. Uh, Billy Boy. <laughs> he says, Tam, Tam's a true blue. <laughs> so there you are. There's Peter. You know, they're, well. they're all over the place. Ann and six, Dumbarton nil. I can't see any way oh, back for Dumbarton. Go on. I feel sorry for Stevie Farrell. Stevie Farrell was my captain at Glen Afton. A really nice they guy. Learned absolutely nothing really, to you. Oh, uh, they have they have just they've collapsed, didn't they? They have just disappeared. Your nine points cleared, by the way, of uh, Stirling. Yeah, I know. I, I worry about that kind of result, you know, for his job. You know, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he's the see what he done in the early part of the season was good, and it's not about just the end. Yeah, he's five nil Clyde one. Yep, Jim Duffy for, for Duff, yeah, old like manager. Duff. Yeah, Jim Duffy. You know, we all we all like Jim Duffy and respect Jim. Yeah. Um, you know, he signed me. He signed me twice for one for Hibs, one for Dundee, and did he? Uh, yeah, he did. I yeah. um, relegated the both. But listen, I think he's five. One of my old clubs as well. You'd like to see them maybe coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I went alone to East Fife and I went alone <laughs> What's the next game? There's another game coming up Isn't it? I was <laughs> Tell you a, okay, a quick story I went, I went alone to East Fife when I was 18 Rab Shannon ex Oh yeah I remember Rab yeah. Signed me And uh, we went in a great run I've done really well there and Last game of the season We played Dumbarton at Boghead And it was the last ever game at Boghead There was about 4,000 there Right We had to beat them To get promoted And Dumbarton had nothing to play for But it was our last game at Boghead and they beat us 2-1 and they all come on the pitch and they all cut the park up and that was the last ever 
last ever game. So that was probably the start for me, where I had a must-win game to get promoted and I get beat. Yeah, uh, and I was sitting next to Jim, having a good chin wag with him at the cup semi-final between Rangers and Celtic, and, I, and at one point when I was sitting next to him, Tom, I looked at him and I thought, you know. Jim could have had a lot of money if, if he maybe he'd signed another striker that could have gotten the crucial goals he needed in those big teams. Yeah. Uh, and he ended up signing Tam twice. Um, had, me the had me with the throat a couple of times. Well, no surprise there, by the way. There's a few in here. Sure that's, that's, what, that's what this feed's all about, Tam. Uh, getting you by the throat. Yeah, oh, wow. absolutely. Uh, Paul McFarlane says, God bless Tam McManus. Keep up the good work, Tam. Uh, so, there you are. Some positive comments today. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Boys for the Loudon Tavern. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, so the next one is uh, he, the. Uh, by the way, what are you doing arguing? What are you doing arguing with people on the on the feed? But, what are you doing arguing with someone on the Twitter? Well, I thought it was a red card for. Uh, I thought it was a penalty for Aberdeen a red card, and I'm not changing. I'm not swaying for it. Yeah, but do you? People were saying, "Oh, he didn't have his arms and go but, never did." But it pulled him down. But do you need to pick fights with people who I clearly do, wear scarves? Me. Sometimes I just can't. I just can't leave it. it just no, just festers. You just going to need to reply to that. Yeah. Uh, so by the way, can I just say something to you? I get that. Sometimes I just throw a wee grenade when I can yeah, and then I go I away. Um, but anyway, I, I spotted somebody sent me the copy of the argument you had uh, last night, and I thought to myself. Now, why would you bother? Um, David Martindale has indeed highlighted that financial plight, Ruffy. Um, he's just, uh, obviously, Livingston, so difficult for them uh, to try and get players. Um, so Is he starting to work his ticket? Well, know? I don't know, but listen, he's been brilliant. Um, yeah, when you absolutely. consider this season, he's been great for us. Uh, we certainly enjoyed following him in that documentary, which you can see on PLZ Soccer. It is well worth watching. Um, Adam was out there today. Thanks Peter, I'm at the Tony Macaroni Arena in Livingston this morning as Livy have just announced a new contract extension for midfielder Andrew Shinney manager David Martindale delighted to get this one over the line it keeps a bit of continuity in the dressing room a well respected figure, well respected leader amongst this squad is Shinney but the manager when he was speaking to the press this morning indicated that a number of players will be leaving we know Devlin Fitzwater, potentially Nubli as well already in addition to Stefan Omionga who looks to be on his way way out of the club are all going to be leaving so the manager's anticipating a really tough summer ahead on the transfer front I've sat with this year I'm not, I'm not telling you any names but I've sat with three championship players the clubs all know I've sat with them um, I like to do things correctly out of contract players in the summer I've sat with them and generally historically I've probably been able to entice these players along to Livingston with a slight maybe pay, pay drop, maybe a slight pay rise, but the, the opportunity to Premiership football, it's becoming more and more difficult to attract these players to the football club because teams in the Championship or maybe even all teams in the Premier League are paying more wages. Martindale also noted the difficulty in getting players from overseas to come and play in the Scottish Premiership that are at the level required to compete in this league, insisting that the quality and the standard of the teams is getting better year after year. As in terms, I think the ability levels are a lot better than people give it respect for. I think it's easy to knock Scottish football at times, but I generally don't see it that way. I've heard the league, I've heard people say it's, oh, the standard of the Premier League this year has not been great. And the rationale for that is that there's 10 teams fighting top six in relegation. Surely that means the standard of the league's got better. That's, but it's easier to knock it and say it's went the other way. I feel personally, coming up against these teams and coming up against these managers, that the standard in the Premier League's got better. Mm, interesting insight from David Martindale. Yeah, it is. I think if you look at around the teams, uh, <coughs> the Ross Counties, the Livingstons, you know, the ones that have got foreign players, I think, I don't know what the percentage would be, but I think the majority of them have done all right. You know, when I look at the foreign players at Ross County, the boy we were talking about the weekend, it was him, it was firing in tremendous crosses into the one. Nandanda. Nandanda. Yeah. Players like that, you know, you would think, I mean, we we, we don't know who, who they were or where they came from, but somebody's identified them and they have come in. And, and given a decent show and he's right you know they've got to come in at the right price range you know, I think he's been very brave and th th been vocal and saying yeah I want more teams in because he's, his bosses will be saying if we let more teams in you're going to have 200 
thousand less at the divvy at the end because you're going to have to share it with the other teams. So he's been very brave, you know, in putting that out there and being honest and telling everybody this is the way ahead. Forget about the finances. Think about the football. Yeah. Okay. Interesting stuff. Would you like to see a bigger league? Um, 14, 16. Um, how would you like to see the split happen? Um, and do you still like the idea of teams playing each other four times in the season, more often than not, two home, two away? Uh, give us your thoughts on that. It'll be interesting to hear what you've got to say on that. Uh, thanks to Paul McFarlane who says, I'm not leaving Ruffy and Peter out of this. Um, I love the show, guys. Thanks, Paul. We very much appreciate um, what you're saying there. Uh, to be perfectly honest, we don't mind. <laughs> we don't mind getting belters because I think you and I are a bit long in the tooth now. Uh, by the way, can I just say something to you? One of our, uh, who shall remain nameless, one of our big friends who's a big Rangers fan um, watched the show on Monday <laughs> and he hasn't, he hasn't been too well and he just, <laughs> he's watched the clip that those um, <laughs> people put out and he shouted nurse nurse <laughs> <laughs> so I think we almost sent him over the edge um, so thank you uh, to so many people who <laughs> always like to comment um, I think this one here Ribo says 20 teams no split oh, um, I mean what, what, what size would you like to see 16 I'd like 16 Ruffy I'd like 16 I'll tell you another thing that somebody the 16 how, well, how would the TV companies be happy with the 16. Well, you play to a certain point, then you split, then eight go one way, eight go the other, and you play each other. You know, it, obviously the split has to come early. I think it's something like maybe 22 games, mm -hmm. and then after that, the three games that you play are your top half and so three the one, at the bottom. Uh, so the ones that you're worrying, the, the TV cameras are worrying about are the Rangers Celtic one. You would get your other two put in. Yeah, you get your you get your games, your four Rangers Celtic games, your four. You, hopefully, you would get with 16 in the league, mm -hmm. your four Rangers Celtic, your four Dundee Dundee United, your four Hearts Hibs. You, you know, you're at Aberdeen big games against all of them. A command like United? You know, mm -hmm. it could be a command like United. It would be brilliant. But can I just say something to you? It, it, it's working now, the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that that's the one thing I was going to say that a, a lot of people are looking at is it does work. It is exciting. It's slightly cutthroat, but it is exciting at the tail end for it. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, it's not been exciting for the first two. Uh, because we all like that to go to the last game or the last couple of games or whatever but apart from that there's Europe underneath that there's a relegation further down you know and, and every other team has got something to play for you know yeah. Livingston's about the only team and, and someone in Scottish football said to me over the last couple of days um, you know I was complaining about the lack of Scottish players getting their chance in this league um, and they mentioned that the axis may well change as we go forward because let's not forget Sky has signed that big 1,000 game deal with the EFL you know you know, there's going to be a, there's going to be very difficult for Scottish clubs again to sign even players from the championship Tam so they're going to have to look and going to have to reassess you know where they buy and also who they're developing yeah I think that's disappointing when you see the young player of year this season there's not most young Scottish players in the running for yeah, absolutely. it um, and you know it's, it's all about giving opportunities but as we said it's, it's cutthroat at the minute it's difficult when you're a manager under pressure and you've got to win games to, to throw a young boy in you know and uh, but, but we, need, we need to start trying to bring young, younger players through but, uh, and a lot of them are getting signed up and Rafael tell you even at Partick Thistle a lot of them are getting signed up 12, 13, 14 before they've even played the first team game at your Motherwells and Thistles and you know, even Hibs Hearts, you know, so a lot of them are getting snapped up by English clubs because of the Brexit rule as well, you know, so yeah, I'd like to see more young players, young Scottish players coming through. I think it's been disappointing this season when you look at the, the numbers and hopefully we'll, we'll see that next season. Yeah, Champions League is the result from last night. Ruffy called it 100% correctly. Real Madrid won, Manchester City won. It's a Milan derby tonight. AC Milan against Inter in that other semi-final. So suddenly, 1-1 from last night. Madrid looked as if they were following their similar patterns. Soak it up, score a brilliant goal. But then Manchester City had other ideas, Ruffy. Yeah, they certainly did. Uh, you're right, it won nothing. I went, I was just... They're going to get another in. You know, you could see it coming, you could see the way they were building up, they could see, and then obviously this, the cream comes to the top, doesn't it? De Bruyne, I mean, what a finish, yeah. what a strike. It was, so was obviously Real Madrid's goal, 
But uh, the whole game is fantastic. Imagine we had a season ticket holder in that place. Where? Real Madrid. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. We'd, we'd just I, would, I would love just to have a press pass. You see the pictures of the thing with Haaland's dad did they, on social media? Yeah, he was noising everybody up. Throwing out the hospitality at Real Madrid for noising all the fans up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. A few beers too many. Uh, well, to be fair, fair play to him. You, you like a noise up. <laughs> um, I have to say, you mentioned Kevin De Bruyne. Pep Guardiola <laughs> loves him. He knows how important he is for us and... Uh, he made an, uh, an incredible performance and for many reasons and uh, we are happy for him. So in this type, type of games, in this competition, in this type of games, semi-finals or finals, you need two best players. Peter, he's the best striker of a ball that I've seen since Steven Gerrard. He's got a very similar, the way he just pings it. Yeah, you know and that goal last night was a, it was very Gerard esque for me. It was the way he used to run out it and just bang, you know, and you know curl it away for the goalkeeper. So he, he's he's one of the best midfield players I've seen, and he's up there with the best in the Premier League. Up there with Stephen Gerrard, I, I think Stephen Gerrard is is bang there, you know, top one or two in terms of midfield players in English foot, English Premier League. But he's up there with De Bruyne. Yeah, what best English midfielder in the last thirty years? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you agree with that, Ruffy? I'm trying to think who, who Skulls, Lampard. Him. Yeah, yeah, I would have Jared up there. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah sure. absolutely. Um, okay, um, <clears throat> just before we uh, go and give you the answer to the quiz as well, thank you so much to so many of you who um, have uh, absolutely just posted lots of messages um, your opinion on things we do value it and we really do appreciate the fact that you um, actually support us and hit the subscribe button and share it and like it um, and enjoy our app and of course our website too and across the social media right across all our channels the figures for uh, last month are absolutely magnificent we're going bigger and bigger uh, and Basically, I think a lot of football fans want to hear uh, an unbiased, fair opinion. Some of the opinion you like, some you don't. It's all about football. It's only a game. Um, you know, we don't like to use the words hate. We would like to stir a little bit of emotion in you um, without, obviously, some people we try and ban who are abusive on here. And we have, in the last couple of days, in fact, in the last 24 hours, um, banned and reported a few people who just clearly um, are from another Single cell amoebas. That's your favourite term? not the show for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He loves that. He loves that. This is not the show for you. Is it the show for Cali Thistle fans who are going to be asked tomorrow for £45 a ticket oh, for the cup final? come on. Wow. Plus all the travelling. That's shocking, isn't it? £45. Long. And who set that? Well, that's that's the price of the ticket. That's that's what it costs to get a ticket. Quid. You know, forty-five quid. It's not the it's, it's the SFA's tournament. Forty-five mm -hmm. quid is it's steep, it's steep yeah, isn't it? It does. You would think maybe around about thirty, you would be would be bearable. Well, they're you. making a long journey as well. It's yeah. half five. We've already talked about that part of the kickoff. It's hard going, by the way, isn't it? And by the way, can I just say something to you? Forty-five quid at a time when a lot of people are struggling with mm -hmm. energy bills, a lot of people are struggling with food, um, and of course even trying to run uh, other things, sundries, on a daily basis. You know, you couldn't even turn around and say to yourself, you know, let's all get down in a car, you know, because mm -hmm. petrol's expensive, mm -hmm. roughly, so th there's no way out of this. 45 quid is... <clears throat> Yeah, I would, I would like to think that Inverness as a club himself are doing their best for transport. Subsidising yeah, buses and stuff. Buses and all that, lay buses on, that kind of thing. But still, 45, if you're going down, there'll be a lot of kids at that. You know, you, you could be taking a, a family doing a four or five. That's a fair whack. Mm. Yep, absolutely. OK, um, just thought to give you that uh, last little bit of news. If you want to see some more interviews from the nominees for the Men's Player of the Year, Women's Player of the Year, it's across all our social media channels. You'll get it on the YouTube channel throughout the evening. You'll also see it on our website. You can read about it. Uh, young player and uh, male and female um, is up there too, and it's well worthy of your viewing. And if you download the app, it's there at your fingertips as well. So the youngest non-Scottish player, the first non-Scottish player to win was back in 2001. It was Stylian Petrov, Ruffy. Would you have got that, Stylian Petrov? No. I'd have got that. that. I'd have got that. Yeah? Played against him plenty, played against him loads of times. Fantastic player, by the way, and the best thighs I've ever seen in a professional football. Is that right? Uh, what, actually, just, you oh, were on the parking oh, yard oh, look at his thighs. Oh. 
Yeah, that's they actually t- uh, talk, ties, talking off thighs before we go. I think Graham Soon has had to get yeah. made to measure suits because of his thighs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the biggest uh, thighs apart from those two that I thought I'd mention is uh, Marvin Andrews, who had to build yes, them up uh-huh. because he had no cartilage in his knees. That's right. So there you are. Uh, who'd have thought we'd have talked about thighs before we leave? Shut it! <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> Don't mention it. Uh, from from <laughs> from Batman and Throbbing. <laughs> And Rafi, thanks for watching. Good night.